The risks with lithium-ion batteries come in a variety of forms depending on the chemistry, the size, and the type of batteries that are being utilized. Obviously, we're going to see lithium-ion batteries in micro-mobility devices, scooters, hoverboards, but also in electric vehicles, energy storage walls that are inside garages, as well as industrial size energy storage systems for the, the grid. The hazards, however, are similar across the board. The lithium ion poses a significant risk on just the chemistry that these batteries are made from. In addition to the exposure, they're challenging to, to extinguish. They don't extinguish well with water. And in addition, when they're at these fires, uh, other batteries that are, are uh, exposed to the heat can be uh, moments away from igniting themselves. And as a lot of us have seen, these lithium ion battery fires are very violent ignition typically. So it's different from a lot of different fuels out there that ignite during the fire, uh, that they pose a, a significant risk just in the, in the sheer um, violence of the ignition. I've either personally been to, uh, had training on, or seen firsthand every type of lithium ion battery fire. Some of the big causes are lesser quality uh, type equipment. People tend to use aftermarket chargers or they buy cheap chargers online and those aren't necessarily always compatible. Um, damage or trauma is absolutely going to cause issues to these batteries. Something called thermal runaway is when uh, the batteries are damaged and some of the components meet together and going to cause us, um, some issues. So in recognizing the immediate dangers that we know our firefighters and the public are faced with the lithium ion battery, we realize that there's going to be federal and state regulations that are going to entail. Uh, that's going to take some time. And so in the meantime, the best way that we can be proactive to protect the public is to really get the, educate the public as far as these risks and these dangers. Regulations have not been able to keep up with the amount of technological changes. And so it's something that we need to really get in front of to be able to protect the public and be able to protect our firefighters when they're responding to these types of incidents. We have a very diverse team that the fire department uh, has has uh, um, created in this lithium ion battery task force. And I feel like with all of our, our uh, strengths, um, we, we're going to better serve ourselves and the public. San Diego Fire Rescue Department has been always providing the, the support needed from the funding necessary, the time necessary, the personnel necessary to really get going into identifying research best practices, reaching outside of our jurisdiction, and be able to give us the latitude to be able to look further and deeper and having that support structure coming from the fire chief on down. You've got to trust your future leaders and your current leaders in the fire service to go out and, and explore and bring back the information for you to make those critical decisions as a fire chief. I would encourage all fire chiefs to explore the grant possibilities to find those leaders in their organization that will go out and bring that information back and really give them the latitude to be able to expand on that and bring it all back to you for critical decisions on best practices there. When we speak as from a level of expertise, it's really something that can have a positive impact in the community. Uh, we've reached out to the news media, we've developed several PSAs, launched out in social media as well as traditional media to educate the public. It's, it's a very complex problem, it's not a simple challenge, and so we're constantly reaching out to different agencies to really identify the, the hazard, the problem, and to try to find where the best solutions were going to be. Um, it's about building relationships. Folks from the San Diego Fire Rescue Department Lithium Ion Task Force have traveled all over the country to uh, New York and Seattle, and those agencies have been great partners in this battle. And so we've talked to the Environmental Protection Agency, the Department of Transportation, National Fire Protection Association, as well as being able to travel internationally going to Norway, but to meet with firefighters from Sweden, Denmark, Netherlands, England, and seeing what issues are they seeing, what similarities, what kind of best practices are they putting into place, as well as reaching out to industry leaders. Those manufacturers have been forthcoming to assist us in developing our best practices. The critical thing for us in the fire service is to open up the doors of collaboration, to reach out to each other and be as successful as we possibly can while we continue to learn learn more and more about this technology. Let's not recreate the wheel, right? If other agencies are out there and have done some research, let's lean on them, let's information share. In addition to that, the education of our firefighters is critical. Uh, we do not want to uh, have any fire personnel be injured uh, on incidents that we know we could provide training and education. So we've leaned forward very heavily on that. We've developed a 
uh, comprehensive training that we've just finished launching to the entire fire department in the city of San Diego. We've offered up training seats for our partners in the region, and we are traveling around providing that training to all fire agencies in the county to make sure that everybody's getting the latest information to protect firefighters from exposures, unnecessary respiratory uh, issues, and understanding the hazards of these batteries.